Hey friends, Sheila here. I am a bicycle traveler and today I'm sharing four ways I communicate with people in new places when I don't speak the language. If you enjoy my videos and you get value from them, consider joining me over on Patreon. Your support helps me to continue making videos and in return you get things like exclusive videos and photos and Q&As and updates and more. All right, let's get to it. Now there are some non-app ways that I communicate that are actually my favorites, but I wanna kick things off with a Google Translate app tutorial because this has really been making a difference for me on my recent tours. I'm not sponsored or anything by Google Translate. I'm making this video just because I think it's gonna be helpful. There are some nifty little tricks inside Google Translate that can help it really improve your experience and help you connect with people and also find answers you need when you're on the road. So let me let me show you some tricks on how to use it. First, you open the Google Translate app. You can select which language you want to translate from and to. You can also use that little arrow on the right hand side to download for offline use. So if you don't have access to Wi-Fi or data on the road. Then you can use the app how you would expect to, to translate just by typing. So is there a hotel here? I un hotel aquí. That is the simplest way to use it, but here is where it gets interesting. You can tap the microphone in the top right and then you or the person you're talking to can record what you want to say. Where is the grocery store? And then you tap the little red button. Oh no, okay. Uh, ah, ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so not, not perfectly executed, but you get the idea. I find this one is particularly useful when you're communicating with maybe somebody who's older or who doesn't have great vision and isn't comfortable kind of taking your phone and typing what they want to say. What I usually do is when somebody's trying to say something and I'm not understanding, I kind of motion to my phone and then I go like one moment and they almost always understand. They give me a moment to get my phone ready. I put it in front of them and then they say what they were going to say and then I have a translation. And the last thing I want to show you is the camera feature. And what I find this most useful for is ingredient lists on food or signs, especially road signs, or any kind of important notice you see. It will continue to serve at 8.30 on May 5th. So that's tomorrow. So I will demonstrate with this bag of couscous. You literally just press the camera button and then hold it up over the words. You can even take a picture of it so that you can read it without having to hold this in place. Now, of course, Google Translate isn't perfect. It's not gonna always understand every word or expression or dialect, but I find it to be a really helpful tool, especially in those instances where maybe, you know, I've been invited into somebody's home or I'm spending more time with somebody. If we don't speak each other's language, you kind of get to a standstill where you can't communicate anymore. And so Google Translate lets me to continue conversing and to continue getting to know them, even though we don't speak each other's language. And I think it's really special that there are more tools now that can let us do that. However, it is not the only way to communicate, and I wanna talk about some of the other ways I love to communicate. The second way I like to communicate, and this might actually be my favorite, is with gestures. Gestures are so simple and they get so much across. Simply pointing to a road and saying, is this road good, can often get a pretty clear answer. If I can tell somebody's asking, you know, where I'm going or what I'm doing, I'll often go biking Singapore and people understand. This is my favorite way to communicate because you're not divided by a screen, you're looking in each other's eyes and you're both in this kind of game together trying to understand each other. So gestures are always my first go-to. My third strategy for particular instances is pulling up a photo on my phone. If it's something really specific and I don't feel like I can get it across by gesturing or by translating it on my phone, then I'll try to pull up a photo. A good example is when we were in Turkey, we were trying to find clear packing tape to pack up our bikes and people trying to help us would point us to all kinds of different 
tools or tapes. And it was only by pulling up a photo of clear tape on our phone that people were like, oh, they understood and they could point us exactly where we needed to go. And then my fourth strategy is using what words I do have to communicate. Wherever I go, I always try to learn things like hello, goodbye, thank you, yes, no, sorry. They're simple to learn. And I just think it's important that I make that effort that I'm not relying on people to understand when I'm saying hello or thank you in my language. I wanna try to say those things in their language whenever I can. Okay, those are four things that have helped me communicate better with others when I am abroad. I would love to hear from you how you communicate with others when you're in a new place and you don't speak the language, or if it's something you haven't done. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thanks so much for being here. See you in the next one. Bye.